The cell is a machine. It's made out of parts. The parts interact with each other to create the complex thing we call life. Well, let's talk about the parts. As I said, there were 70 to 90,000 different protein parts that make up the human. Now, here's the interesting understanding about these parts. Of all the proteins, all of them are linear strings, just like this beaded string. Every protein is a beaded string. The beads are the, the subunits, the little beads are called amino acids. Now, it's hard for you to see how you get structure out of something that looks like a string of beads. So instead of beads, I'm going to use these as representatives of beads. These are little pipe fittings. I have three different, actually, shapes of pipe fittings. So here's the point. If I start to assemble these pipe fittings in a sequence, what you can start to see is I am creating a linear chain, but now it's not so flexible and floppy. It actually has a rigid backbone kind of structure to it. So as I start to assemble this, you can see I can create a structure. Okay? So now the bottom line is this. I have this particular protein. And if I just made a body out of protein only, and that's all it was, then I would be a statue instead of made out of brass or bronze, I'd be a statue made out of organic building blocks called a protein. There's no life. Where does the life come from? That is the most important, exciting question. I made a machine out of protein, but what is life? Life is animation. Life is movement. And so therefore, where's the movement come from? Now I'm going to show you that. <laughs> and it's simple because this is the ultimate understanding of where life comes from. When I s assembled these together, I connected them like poppet beats, but look, they twist because at the junction, they're, they're not locked, so I can change the shape of this protein. I just made this one, okay? Now I'm going to show you something. Let me show you two different shapes. And before I do that, I'm going to give you a, a little uh, piece of information. The yellow ones at the end are going to be negatively charged. Both of them are negative. Why is this important? We'll go back to a very basic principle of science. When two white charges come against each other, what do they do? They repel each other. And two opposite charges, what do they do? Attract. So I'm going to show you two different shapes of the same protein by just twisting it. And I'm going to ask you to tell me which is the more stable of the two. Okay? Let's use this as shape one. Okay? Now I'm going to show you shape two. And then I want you to tell me which is more stable, shape one or shape two. Shape two. And the reason why? Because the two negative charges repel each other. They want to get as far away from each other as they can. So does this make sense that this is a stable shape for this protein? OK, cool. Now, I have this protein in your body. And I said that this was negative at the end. And this is an environmental signal. And I'm going to talk about environmental signals. Signals are either other molecules or atoms or energy. Energy can be signals as well. But in this case, let's say it's a molecule. Let's say it's estrogen, a hormone. And let's just say that it's very positively charged. What's the charge on here? Negative. A negative? Okay, so if this is coming along and this is positive, what happens when two opposite charges come near each other? So all of a sudden, you're going to find that there's a binding. Where the, this is where the estrogen binds to the protein. Now, this is more positive than, than this negative. So the question is this. What's the charge at this end of the molecule now? Positive. positive. What's the charge at this one? Now, the question is very simple. Is this shape of the molecule stable, or is this one more stable? Uh, now, that, this is so fundamental. I want you to understand how critical this is. You understood that there was a shape, that if I have this molecule on, let's say I take this molecule off, what's the shape going to do? It's going to open back up like this, right? And then if I put the molecule back on, what's the shape going to do? Close. Well, you, you just told me there were two shapes that were stable, and the difference is when I add the signal, I go from one shape to the other. Does that make sense? Well, that is where life comes from. Life is movement of the proteins. The proteins move, and when they change shape, they can do jobs. So if I have work, I can have this thing do a job. By opening and closing, that would be its job. Proteins provide for my physical structure, but proteins can change shape when a signal binds to that protein. So all of a sudden it says that a static protein could just be sitting here, but the moment the signal shows up, the protein does something. Well, that something is hooked or actually used to do a job in the cell. So what is digestion? Here's an enzyme. It stands here. Here's the food molecule, and it gets caught in my hand, and I bring it together, and I rip it apart. That's all it is. Ripping apart. Digestion. So the bottom line is this. 
your machine. The structure of the machine is due to the protein parts. The proteins are all these linear chains made out of amino acids. That the final structure is due to the sequence of the amino acids and the charge. That's this critical part. When I balance the charge, the protein is stable. If I change the charge, the protein changes its shape. It's simple, but it's very basic science, okay? And here's the point about it is this, is that, uh, and this is interesting because this is a uh, right out of the science uh, journal, and this is backbone here, this protein in green, is the same one that's in yellow. And in this case, this is a protein that causes muscle contraction in your body. And it depends on this signal. The signal is calcium. When calcium shows up, it plugs into the hole. It changes the charge and it causes the protein to change its shape from this inactive form, conformation one, shape one. When I add the signal, it goes to shape two, the active form. If I take the signal away, then the protein goes back to the resting state. So there are two different shapes to the protein, an active and an inactive form, and the activity is now controlled by the signal. So basically it says that proteins provide for your physical structure, but proteins also provide for your behavior. Your behavior is the movement, the actions that you express in your life. And the movement comes from the movement of protein. So basically it says your behavior represents the action of a protein that interacts with a signal. And so that the signal activates the protein to move and the movement generates behavior. 